If you have limited knowledge about the databases but you are good in .NET code, it means you are good in Entity Framework code and the C Sharp, then you can work with any database only by using this .NET skills. In this video, we will learn how to work with the migrations by using the Entity Framework code. To work with the migrations, first we have to set up few classes and these classes are the replica of all the tables that we will be having in our database. So for example, if I want to have 3 to 4 tables over there, then I have to define all those tables as a classes over here. The property name with a data type that we will define in our application will be the column in your database. We can also define all our foreign keys over here. But there is important concept if you are having a column with name id then that will be treated as a primary key by default. Once the classes are ready then you have to define them in the db context class and you can do that by using the db set method that is given by the entity framework code. If you want to have a different name of your table than the class name then you can define that name over here and based on that name your table will be created. Once the classes are done we have to work with the migrations and for that we have to open the terminal window and we can generate that migration by using this .NET CLI command. This name could be anything here I am writing this init but you can give any meaningful name to your migration. Once this migration will be done then you will notice that there is a new folder within a migrations at the root level of your application and there are few scripts under that folder. Based on these scripts this entity framework core will update your database in future. Here we have to use one more command to update or apply these changes in our database. So right now you can notice that we do not have any database with this name in our SQL server. So based on the name of the database that we have defined in our connection string, this new database will be generated. Let's run another command which is going to be the .NET EF database update. Here you can notice that we do not have any database with this name but once the migration will be successful then you can verify that there will be a new database. The script is done. If I refresh these changes over here you will notice we are having a new database with all the new tables. There is one more extra table over here and this table is created by the entity framework core to track all your migration changes. Let's see what data is there inside this table. As of now there is only one single record because we have only one migration in our application. In future if you will create more than one migration then you will see all those changes will also be there in that table. Now let's make another change in the table. Let's say I want to update one of the table. So right now I want to add one more property or one column in the author table. So for that first I have to add a new property in this author class and then create one more migration and then update the database. So let's do that. Again by using the same terminal window I can run again that add migration command and this time you can give any other meaningful name to your migration. Once it is done then make sure to update the changes in the database and you will see that the latest changes it means this new property is visible as a column in the database in the author table. 